I can't say nothing bad about the Cowboys. I, I told you my coworker might be listening. So, you know, shout out to him. Uh, I'm, I'm going to yeah. go to the Cowboys. We're supposed to talk nicer about the Cowboys. You know, if they put it all together, they could win the Super Bowl. They're the best team in the NFC. Welcome. Welcome. To Beyond. To Beyond. Sports. Sports. With Paul and Jeremy. With Paul and Jeremy. I'm Paul. I'm Jeremy. We look at sports from all angles. This is what's really going on. Beyond Sports. Beyond Sports. Uh, welcome everybody to Beyond Sports with Paul and Jeremy. As you can see, Jeremy is a frequent flyer. Uh, and today what we're going to do, we're going to do kind of like a quick show. So you guys are um, in luck. We're doing our quick pick. So we're, we're going to try to see if we can do this in like 30 minutes or so. So we'll try to be done be- before what, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So yeah, yeah. Hey, we, we got good. some stuff stuff ahead of us. Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly how we did last week. I probably didn't do good. Jeremy probably did a lot better. Um, but we'll we'll get that we'll get that information out to you guys as well. Um, Jeremy, so this week you're traveling. You're 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 flying in the high skies, the, the super high skies, like maybe outer space type skies. Um, let's uh let's let's uh, talk about these picks for uh for these games this week. There's a lot of actually interesting games this week, so. I'm excited to kind of see how you're going to go through some of these. And, you know, uh, this week we also have some Saturday night games, which is something yeah. totally different than we've had before, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I just started, I just saw these, uh, these games for the first time too. So I'm just doing it on the fly. Speaking of fly, I did see Michael Strahan in the, in the, in outer space when I was up here, he's doing well, he's hosting a new show from outer space. So, you know, how he is, he stayed busy. Hey, it is what it is. I was about to say, was he in the airport? We need to just <laughs> go spam him. <laughs> Be like, Michael, come on the show. What's good? Um, anyways, so uh, let's just start off with games. We'll start from the first game, then we'll just keep going down the line. So the first game that we have is the Chiefs versus the Chargers. So Chiefs versus the Chargers, um, a very interesting game. Um, both of these teams are doing really well so far this season. Nine and four for the Chiefs, eight and five for the Chargers. Jeremy. What do you anticipate is going to happen in this game in Los Angeles? I do not want to believe that Kansas City is for real. I don't feel like they've changed. It doesn't make any sense. But the Chargers also don't seem like they're they're that good. They're up and down. So it seems like this yeah. will be a really evenly matched game. If both teams actually have their scoring right, this could be a pretty high-scoring game. I'm going to go with Kansas City just because they've been mm-hmm. on a win streak. They won, what, six in a row maybe? So they've been on this nice little win streak. They've gotten things together, maybe. So I'll go with the hot team. Yeah, it's kind of weird with that Kansas City win streak, right? Because they haven't really beat a bunch of crazy teams in convincing fashion, right? Like they've won the games, but it hasn't been anything crazy. Um, I think that for me, I wanted to go with Kansas City too, but I'm going to go with the Chargers. I think it's going to be a, a high-scoring game. I think the Chargers are really going to push the tempo, and they're going to force Kansas City to really throw the ball and be aggressive. So. I'll go with the Chargers. I think that they have a decent amount of ability in this game, but this is going to be a crazy one tonight. So I'm excited to see what happens during this game. So Jeremy's going with the Chiefs. I'm going with the Chargers. Uh, you need me to note those down, or, do you, or did you have those? I got them. I got them. All right, cool. Um, our next game that we have is the Raiders versus the Browns, two teams that started the season very hot, but now they're as cold as ice. Um, what do you think, Jeremy? Who are you taking in this game, the Raiders or the Browns? You know what? I think I'm going to have to go with the Browns Ooh. only because they're at home. The Raiders are up and down. I heard the Raiders talking about at some point starting Mariota as opposed to, to Carr. So I don't Dang. know. They don't know what they want to do. They seem like they're not great. But every now and then they'll put up a big number and just play really well. I think games against Kansas City, you can't really count for Las Vegas. So let's say they play well. But I'm going to go with Cleveland just because they're at home. They're tough on defense. Let's just do that. Yeah, I think Cleveland at home, uh, especially where they're five and two, have uh, an advantage during this game. The Raiders just haven't really seen themselves after all that turmoil that was going on. And when you're talking about Miles Garrett and that defensive front going against uh, the Raiders with Derek Carr, who doesn't necessarily do as well under pressure, especially if you're talking about putting Mariota in there uh, and adding that pressure as well. That's going to be one of those other things. And that running back by committee with Nick Chubb um, and um, Oh, Dream Hunt. Dream Hunt. 
uh, I think that that's going to be one of the things that really helps out the Browns and puts them to the next level. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Browns in this game as well. The next game that we have on our schedule is the Patriots versus the Colts in Indianapolis. I don't even think this one's going to be close. I'm going to go the Patriots um, to lose, uh, the Colts to win for this one. So I'm going to say the game's going to be 36 to 17. Colts win this one. All right. Here's the thing. We know that New England has one of the nastiest defenses right now. They force a lot of turnovers. They score points on defense. They like to get like they, they get at, after the passer. Their secondary is really aggressive. I don't think it's going to be a great day for Carson Wentz. So can Jonathan Taylor carry the team? That's the question. I don't think he can. I'm going to go, going to go with New England. They're going to play ball control. I think they'll be effective running the ball. And I think they'll stop the passing game of, of Indy. So sorry, Paul. I'd love to root for your team here. I will. I will root for them, but I don't think they're going to win. But that's a game to watch, though. So I have a question for you with that one. Do you think yeah. that Jonathan Taylor can't carry the team because they won't give him the ball or just that he doesn't have the ability to? Actually, I think it's more of the former. I think they're just not going to give him enough enough touches. I think, yeah. you know, Carson Wentz, he's just a beautiful man. We love him. So you got to let him play, right? There's nothing you can do about it. We love that man so much. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. I feel this, I feel that that could definitely happen, especially when they're trying to elevate the team and make it Carson Wentz's team. Like, it's such a ridiculous thing. The Colts are actually favored in this game by two and a half points. So we'll wow. see how, how that goes. Um, I should have said the last uh, couple of games, uh, Kansas City is favored by three points. Um, Las Vegas is favored by one, and the Colts are favored by two and a half. Uh, the you know, next, I've been, uh, I've been listening to Bill Simmons' podcast, uh -huh. and they do lines every week. They, they guess the lines to games, and they've been saying that home field advantage is only worth like a point and a half now, so yeah. instead of three. So maybe they say that Indy's actually much better, you know, because normally that three points would put them over, and they'd actually be on a neutral field favored to lose by a half point, right? But I guess you know, with with home field counting for less, maybe the betters think that uh, Indy's much better than New England. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that we've seen this season is that home field really hasn't been that much of an advantage. There's actually more teams, I think, with better road records than they have home records this season, which is which is fairly kind of a, uh, which is an interesting point to to make. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully the Colts can pull it out. They're favored in this game, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, that next game that we have is the Panthers versus the Bills, and this is going to be in Buffalo. Uh, the Bills are favored by ten and a half points over the Panthers. Are you? going with the bills in this game jeremy i got to i'd love to see carolina pull it out <laughs> but what does carolina have now mccaffrey's hurt cam, got is cam. Not we cam oh was. cam I mean, we love cam cam <laughs> takes accountability he, he's responsible for getting coaches fired and he admits it but you know what he doesn't do he doesn't win games apparently he's lost 11 games in a row as the starter for carolina panthers no joke so yeah. it's it's not there we love to have him back we love his energy but the play actually isn't there on the field. Yeah. I'm going with Buffalo. Wow. That's a good stat to know. Um, yeah, I am also going with Buffalo. They they keep showing more. They just they're they're right at the edge of getting their stuff together. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Buffalo Bills over the Carolina Panthers, especially in cold Buffalo, New York. Uh the next game that we have is the um Arizona Cardinals uh versus the Lions. The Cardinals are favored by 13 and a half. Um, they, they have a big loss this week, right? DeAndre Hopkins is going to be out for the rest of the regular season. And if they make the playoffs, there's a chance that he may come back. Um, the Cardinals are seven and O on the road this season. Um, and the Lions are one and five at home. So Jeremy, are you making the logical decision? Or are you going with your heart and choosing the Lions for this game? When you said big loss, I thought you were talking about that loss to the Rams, but you losing DeAndre Hopkins was, was bad enough. He's out for the season. That doesn't matter. Detroit is just not good. They got their win. They need to keep that record symmetrical. They can't win any more games. One sixteen or one fifteen and one is where they're going to go. So yeah, I'm going to go with Arizona. That's pretty cool. Right now they're one 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 one. So it, it's <laughs> a really wins. cool record. Like you, this is the biggest season ever. We never thought we'd see one 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 one. Uh, so <laughs> shout out to the Lions for losing, and I think that they're going to lose this game as well. I don't think they have enough for the Cardinals. Um, but I think, uh, I think it's Armin St. Brown. Uh, I think he's going to have a really good, big game uh, as a wide receiver for, for the Lions. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, the next game that we have is the Jets versus the Dolphins in Miami. So, um, yeah, this is going to be more of an interesting game. Like, I know Miami's favored by nine and a half, 
Um, who are you taking, Jeremy? Are you do you think the Jets have enough to bounce back to try to win this game uh, in Miami, or is this going to be Miami taking this one, uh, taking this one home? You know, there's something about teams going down to play in Miami during this part of the year that for some reason it's just it's too warm for them. For them. I don't know what it is, but they don't play well. New England had that problem all the time. Miami's on a five game win streak. All right. So mm-hmm. they're they're the second hottest team right now. We know that whatever they're doing is working. The short pass game is working. They've been they've been holding teams to 17 points or less in this this win streak. So their defense is showing up. I got to say that they're in a much better position and much better shape than the Jets. So, yeah, I think they win and sneaky, sneaky playoff candidate right there. If you look at it, six and seven, getting into the playoff race with a win. I also think that the Dolphins uh, coming in hot are going to be the ones that win this game. The Jets, they've had some things show up and I think that they will actually make it a little bit more competitive than we anticipate, especially if Michael Carter comes back. Um, Their wide receivers are eh, and they lost Elijah Moore. So that's definitely going to hurt them. So I think the Dolphins definitely have the advantage, but I'm looking for the Jets to make this more of a competitive game. They won three games this year, and I didn't know that they were going to get that. So shout out to the Jets for overachieving with three wins. Um, the next game is the Cowboys versus the Giants in New York. Um, what you thinking, Jeremy? I can't say nothing bad about the Cowboys. I, mean, I told you my coworker might be listening. So, you know, shout out to him. Uh, I'm, I'm going to yeah. go to the Cowboys. We're supposed to talk nicer about the Cowboys. You know, if they put it all together. They could win the Super Bowl. They're the best team in the NFC. All that good stuff about the Cowboys. Yeah, I so, also yeah, heard that I'm, we're supposed to be a, bad word. a little bit nicer to the Cowboys. But yeah. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. I can't stand them. Um, but, you know, uh, Cowboys are in one of those situations, again, where they need to prove that they're a playoff team. And they haven't really done that consistent, consistently yet. So, for me, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's just ride these Giants out for the rest of the season. Let's get them up to five wins. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Giants to pull the upset over the Cowboys. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but you do so, realize that picking the Giants is not the same as them winning, right? Uh, I'll pick the Giants to win. I'm just saying, like, just because you pick them don't mean they're going to get those wins that you think they're going to get. Yeah, you know, like, they'll do what they can do. That's that's all I, that's all, that's all I like, expect from some of these teams. Just do what you can do at this point because – yeah, they'll get a good draft pick. They need help. They need a lot of help. Maybe they'll get yeah. a, another trash quarterback to put behind um, uh, Daniel Jones. Uh, the next game that we have is Washington versus the Eagles. And this game is going to be in Philadelphia, cold Philadelphia. <sighs> Both of these teams are six and seven. Playing? I don't know. That is a good good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one is playing. Do you think that it matters? Would you take Washington over Philly? If they had Minshew or if they had, um, why do I keep forgetting names? Hurt. Yeah, I was like, Jay, Jay, Jay. So it says they split the reps ahead of the game. So now we have a true platoon situation. Now you don't know who's going to have the ball. Jalen Hurts comes in. He's dangerous because of his, uh, his, uh, his running ability. Gardner Minshew, obviously the better pocket passer. That could be something if they, if they kind of rotate them in and out. I, I like that situation. Whereas for Washington, they're starting to play a little bit better and maybe looking like they were supposed to. Heineke's playing better. I'm not so sure about their entire offense and the skill position players. So I like Philadelphia more in this matchup just because I think that they've been a little bit more explosive, a little more consistent overall all year long. Yeah, this is one that's a little bit more tough for me. Um, I like both teams. Uh, I like what Washington offers. I feel like they can be a little bit more aggressive. I think the biggest edge for me is going to be that uh, that defense. And I'm going to go ahead and take the Eagles defense over Washington's for this game, just because the Eagles have been a little bit more consistent. They've been doing a little bit better. But you know how we were talking about that situation with home and away? The Eagles are actually one and four at home this season, yeah. while Washington is three and three, right? So that home field advantage may not necessarily work in the Eagles' favor because it's only worked one time so far this season. So this is definitely a game to keep your eye out for. Um, if you're interested in seeing a good game that should be highly contested. Um, Look at the Eagles' win-loss for the year. They alternated wins and losses for their first four games. Lost, win, lost, win. Lost four in a row, won four in a row, and they just lost their last game. Sorry, for, sorry Washington. This is all Washington. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Washington's trend. They they just lost four in a row, then won four in a row, and now they lost one to the Cowboys. So they might Time be in the, in the midst of another four, another four losses in a row here. 
or or another win. I think that they're in. I'm telling you that Washington team, man, it's it's going to be a lot closer than what people think. Um, but yeah, all right. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So uh, the next game that we have is the Titans versus the Steelers, and this one is in Pittsburgh. So, man, Steelers are iffy. They like really do well sometimes. The Titans have had a lot of struggles recently. Uh, Jeremy, what are you thinking with this game? So this game was one of the games that I thought might be the closest and hardest to pick. I think that Kansas City Chargers game is, is tough to pick. Yeah. This game could go either way because you don't know what you're going to get from Ryan Tannehill and the mm-hmm. offense for Tennessee any given week. And the same goes with the Steelers. What you know about the Steelers, they're going to get down early. They're yeah. going to be down by like three touchdowns, and they're going to somehow either tie it or make it a game at the end of the game. So the question is, can they get over the top? I think I'm going to go with Tennessee this time even yeah. though I have no real conviction, but it's probably going to be a close game. Yeah, I'm going to actually go with the Steelers. Uh, this game is even as far as the line, and I think that that's one of the interesting points when Jeremy was saying that this game is very close. I think Najee Harris, um, uh, Ray Ray McLeod, like these guys are definitely going to amp it up a little bit more. Um, and for the Titans, it's really going to be on them to show that they can have a running back step up now uh, that Derrick Henry's out, and then also getting their wide receivers involved. They're at one of those situations where they were very high initially. But, you know, if they lose this game and they go to nine and six, well, now that gives way for uh, the Colts to try to squeak into the playoffs uh, if they get a couple more wins and the Titans do not continue winning. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Steelers for a couple of different reasons. Uh, But this is definitely going to be a close game that I'd be interested in looking at how it plays out. Um, The next game. Uh, the Titans at the Jaguars, or sorry, Texans at the Jaguars, right? This is a close, close matchup uh, as far as the line. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars are favored by four and a half points. Um, Jeremy, what are you thinking? How, how Jacksonville just fired Urban Meyer today. Everybody rejoiced in Jacksonville. Apparently a cloud was lifted from the organization. So maybe that's why they're favored. Addition by subtraction. No for them to be favored. Yeah, yeah. So I think Houston has been playing better. But you know what? I'll go with Jacksonville. I'll go with them for the we just fired our coach uptick. So that's what they got going for them. They they, they got rid of that huge negative, and now there's no more free wings in the organization. But they're cool with it. Yeah, I think the biggest issue with the Texans is that who do they have? What do they do? Name three Texans players right now. Uh, Let me see. J.J. Watts. No, no, no. Tyrod Taylor and Davis Mills. And then I don't even know a third player, to be honest. I don't. Hey, there you go. And this is why they're not going to win the game. Uh, so let's go. You didn't ask any other team because I would have said the same thing for any other team. So, yeah. So you're like, yeah, let me talk about the quarterback and who replaced him. And uh, <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah. It's like, I try not Ken- to pay attention to the Like, text. is Kenny Steele still there? Um, it's, um, what's that running back? Uh, David yeah. Johnson. David Adrian Johnson, Foster, David Adrian, Johnson, Adrian Foster, Adrian Foster. <laughs> Adrian Foster. Foster. <laughs> like, who do they have? You know, um, Deshaun Watson's still there, actually, right? So you could have named him, but yeah. you could have went for three for three with the quarterbacks. But the quarterbacks. Anyways, yeah, they could. They probably would be better off putting their quarterbacks one at wide receiver, one at running back, and one at quarterback, and they probably have a better <laughs> lineup, which is wow. Um, anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Jags as well. I think the Jags have a little bit more addition by subtraction. They're definitely going to get the running game going uh, with James Robinson as long as he gets to play. So I think that I'll go ahead and go with the Jags for that one. The next game Man, that we have. I, okay. I hope to see uh, our number one pick, Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence, throw like four touchdowns, no interceptions, and just have a complete revival in the middle of the season. That's what I want to see. And then that firing will be completely justified because he's looked so terrible just under this coaching staff yeah. for whatever reason. So I hope he doesn't just fall off, you know? That's a that's a good point. Like, I feel like Urban Meyer's teams have been so good at the college level where there's such a discrepancy between really good players and really bad players where maybe he doesn't really know how to adjust to the NFL level. Like, I feel like they're trying to use Trevor Lawrence like he's back at Clemson. And you can't necessarily do that with a quarterback when you're trying to get him acquainted with uh, the NFL and how the game's going to be. So, yeah, maybe Urban Myers deserved to be fired. Maybe he wasn't really the right direction for that team. So, hey, um, maybe he threw them a, a lucky egg when he decided to get his his dance on. Um, next game that we have is the Bengals versus the Broncos in Denver. Uh, Denver's favored by two and a half against the Bengals in this game. 
Jeremy, tough game. Um, what are you thinking? Does Joe Burrow have enough to uh, get that road victory? You're telling me that Denver has favored this game. By two and a half. That's why we know nothing about how the NFL works because no week during the season have I thought Denver was any good. And at some point, yes, you did. He was yes, you did. <laughs> I thought that they might win, but I didn't think they were good. They're so at the beginning of the season, man. Don't make me run it back. <laughs> the Bengals, well, I, we need to, we need to find, this, find the tape. But the Bengals were challenging for the number one seed at some point. It was early, right? But they started off so, yeah. so hot that yeah. at least at some point we thought that they were really good. And we thought Joe Burrow was recovered. Mm-hmm. And just we just thought the, the team was so much better. So that's crazy. That I, I'm going to go with Cincy because I think they're a better team. But, you know, playing, playing in Denver, mile high altitude, that does some things to you. I wouldn't be surprised if they did win since they're favored and all, but I like Cincy. True. True. Uh, yeah, for this one, I think that I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, uh, Cincy as well. I think that they have a, a pretty strong – actually, switch that up. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Broncos. Javante Williams has been doing a lot better. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the Broncos. I wanted to go with the Bengals initially, but with you talking and being their supporter, I was like, you know, I, I can't go with them. I can't, I can't do it. So um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the Broncos. Uh, the next game is the Falcons versus the 49ers. Guess what? Guess who's favorite in this game? Uh, the Falcons. The Falcons are not favorite. They should uh, not be favorite ever. Uh, good, they're down, good. They're San Francisco's favorite by nine and a half. But the crazy wow. thing is that if you look at the Falcons, they're five and two on the road. And uh, the 49ers are two and four at home, right? I talked about this point a little bit earlier off of Jeremy's initial point. Um, and they've, they're only one game difference, six and seven for the Falcons and seven and six for the 49ers. So this is odd, man. This is an odd game. Who are you choosing in this game, Jeremy? I'm going to go with the 49ers. You know what? I'm back. I'm back on the 49ers. I'm a Super Bowl pick. I got to go with them. I'm back. So 49ers are getting it together. They had a nice little run recently when we counted them out. They won four or five. So I think, you know, they're much better. They're at home, which for them, home field hasn't been really strong either. And they went yeah. a long time without winning in their home stadium for other for other reasons. They weren't allowed to play there. But Who, who do they uh, yeah. lose to at home? Who do they lose to at home? Let me yeah, see. Yeah, the 49ers. Uh, I'm going to look at their record. I mean, they lost to the Cardinals. They beat the Rams at home. But they'd gone a long time without winning at home. Lost to the Packers, Seahawks, Colts at home in the beginning part of the season, and then Cardinals. And then they finally, I think they beat the Rams for their first home win in I don't even know how long, like a year and a half or something like that. It just had been tough for them to win at home. But they, were, they weren't allowed to play in their home stadium for the longest time anyway. All right. Well, uh, with that said, I'll go with the Falcons. Let's go with the Falcons. Let's see what the Falcons can do on the road. Um, I don't think they should be favored, but hey, whatever. Well, uh, it's just going to be that kind of week. I got to catch up to Jeremy somehow, so I'm not going to do it by picking the same teams. So let's go uh, Falcons for this game. I'm probably not going to do it by picking the Falcons either, but hey, whatever. Um, life happens. So um, I'm going to the Falcons. Jeremy's going to the 49ers. This would be a big upset if it happens, um, but then they'll end up having the same record, which is very odd and weird. Mm, I don't know. Uh, next game is going to be the Seattle Seahawks at Los Angeles Rams. This game is actually a little bit more intriguing than it seems. The Rams are only favored by five and a half. Jeremy said that there's a point and a half um, that is allocated to the home team. So that's like a four point difference. So this game should basically come down to a field goal. It's a little bit is what is what they're saying. So, Jeremy, what do you think uh, with this game? Are the Rams going to be the next level? I'm going to I'm going to ask you first. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that win over Arizona for the Rams was actually a real win or was a fool's gold? Uh. Hmm. I think it was an interesting game. I think that Arizona didn't have enough to offer consistently at some points in that game. There were some bad throws. Um, I think the Rams, honestly, Matthew Stafford looked a lot better, a lot more comfortable in that game passing. Uh, but he might not necessarily have OBJ this week as well. So that could be another issue. So I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if it's really I don't know how much it says about the Rams long term. Um, but to beat a team that has been at a high level, I think it says a, says a lot. So James Conner worked his butt off, uh, and I think that that was pretty amazing. So I don't know. I, I'll give them. I'll give them the Rams credit for for that win. Yeah. What are you thinking? I I don't believe it was real. I think it was a good game, but Kyler was off all game. 
I mean, James Conner looked great, right? Yeah. Like their running backs just looked looked really good, and it felt like it was just kind of almost there for Arizona, but not quite. But I don't think that if they played that game five times, that the Rams would win three. You know what I mean? I just don't think that they're better. It was just a game that they won. I think that the Rams can still win this game against Seattle, but I'm just looking looking ahead. You know what I mean? I don't think that that proved to me that the Rams are the best team in their division. But I'll go with the Rams for this game. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, Seattle to pull the upset. Um, I think that they have a lot. I like the Rams. I like what Cooper Cup did. He was just making everybody look ridiculous. Uh, and I think that the Rams should win this game, but I feel like I'm going to go with the upset, right? There's always a percentage chance that the Seahawks can win. So, yeah, let me take the Seahawks in this game. Um, let's see. All right, we have three more games left, so we're right on time. Uh, the Packers versus the Ravens, right? So this game should have been a little bit more of a highlight. Is Lamar coming back? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't I don't know if he's coming back. He might still be hurt. They might have some some more positive tests in their in their team too. I think I heard the radio when I was coming back to the airport just saying like they're kind of worried about the game anyway, all the Baltimore fans. So I don't know if it's gonna look too good on them. I'm gonna go with Green Bay because Green Bay is one of the better teams in the NFC anyway. And then when you couple that with un- uncertain health status of Baltimore players, is I don't think it's going to be a very close game, really. So I'm going to go with Green Bay. But Tyler Huntley has been playing pretty well, too. Yeah, you know, Jeremy's favorite co- quarterback. Uh, Dude, just to let you I know, know. Green- I didn't know. <laughs> I was going to say, just to let you know, Green Bay is favored by five and a half for this game. So a lot closer, but I bet that spread will change if Lamar ends up playing. Um, I'm also going to go with the Packers. I just don't think that the Ravens have enough, especially with the Packers defense being stronger this year. If the Ravens don't have Lamar, like what, what happens? I don't think they can do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the Packers to win this game as well. Uh, the next game that we have is an interesting inter uh, division game with the saints and the Buccaneers. Buccaneers have been pretty strong. Uh, saints are up and down. What are you thinking, Jeremy? This game is in uh, Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers are favored by 11 points. Oh my gosh, 11 points. I don't so what feel do you like that. I don't feel like that is accurate because I know New Orleans won't score points, right? I know that for sure. Okay. But are we? Do we know that Tampa can score on New Orleans? Like New Orleans defense has had Tampa's number for the past year and a half. Yeah. So you can't expect it to be some sort of offensive explosion for Tampa. Maybe it ends up being 15 to three or something like that. You know, maybe it's some weird score where it's low scoring. But Tampa wins by more than 11. I don't know. That seems like a huge number for Tampa. But I do think that they win. I just don't think that it'll be dominant because that New Orleans defense has just controlled that that Tampa offense for the last year and a half. Yeah, for me, I'm actually going to uh, – dang it, do I want to? Yeah, I'm going to go with New Orleans. They're getting Kamara back. Uh, and, you know, uh, Taysom Hill has looked a lot better recently. I think he went, what, 12 for 15 or some 15 for 18 this past week. So definitely a lot better uh, performance from him. Nice weather out there in Tampa. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and give it to the Saints for this one on the road to to pull off this victory. This will be the first home loss for the Buccaneers on the season if this happens. So keep your eye out for the Sunday night game. Monday yeah, I night. I don't know okay. if it'll work, but I know that Taysom Hill's out there running the Wildcat every single play. He's just like the early 2000s Miami Dolphins right there. He's bringing it back, and I appreciate it. He is. Yeah. Um, that that'll be interesting. The 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 next game that we have in our final game is the Vikings at the Bears. This one is interesting to say the least. Um, Bears always are going to have like crazy weather. This is going to be a night game. The anticipated temperature is going to be thirty eight degrees. The Vikings are favored by four and a half. Jeremy, <sighs> what are you thinking, man? This is this is going to be an interesting game. What do you what do you think is going to happen? Thank you for looking that up because that's what I was going to ask about. Is this going to be a crazy weather game? It's not going to be so bad. However, I do think that Chicago being at home and Minnesota being so inconsistent, like how do you lose to the the Lions, right? So I think the situation where Minnesota is just reeling a little bit, Chicago's not great, but Chicago's been playing pretty well. Like they put up a, a pretty good amount of points against Green Bay and they were they won the first half against Green Bay, so they got a little yeah. bit of momentum. So I'm gonna go with Chicago. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm gonna go with the Vikings, uh, just because again, I need to catch up with Jeremy on this. 
And it, it's kind of hard, man. When you're talking about uh, the Cowboys, or sorry, uh, the Vikings and the, the Bears, like it's just who really knows, especially with that Vikings defense um, giving up so many big plays. Like, I don't think you can do that um, uh, versus uh, Justin Fields if he's he, if he's going to be starting. He knows how to take advantage of different types of situations, if not by the air, by the ground. Uh, David Montgomery's been doing a lot better as far as the running back. They've had a couple other um, receivers that have definitely showed up. Uh, and the Vikings are just bad in coverage. Like they're maybe this, they're like one of the fourth worst uh, coverage teams in the NFL right now. So that's a big issue, especially when we're talking about a game that's going to be tight. It's going to be in the wind, um, most likely. Um, so, you know, like I, I feel like for this game, uh, man. I'm, I'm still going to go with the Vikings, but they, I could definitely see them losing this game. And I, I, I'd, I'd probably take the under, honestly, the over under is 44. So I probably take the, <laughs> the over under, um, yeah. but um, yeah, so I'm going to go with the, the Vikings. So we went through all the games and that basically took us about 30 minutes. So that was a, a very quick, uh, quick game pick type of thing. We didn't really talk too much about last week, but we mentioned a couple of the games that were interesting. Um any um any uh games that you wanted to quickly quickly talk about from last week and then uh and then I guess we can close up and get out of here. Not me. Uh we went ten and four, both of us last week. So we we're both ten and four. <laughs> so you didn't make up any more ground, but you had a great week. But you know, both ten and four. Yeah. Um some things that I do have though, our college football pool, we're doing that. We talked about college football bowl, so we're doing one of those ESPN college football bowl pick things. It's on our Facebook page, so check that out. And then next week, we're going to be doing our Christmas episode. So if you like last year's and our themes and everything like that, we're going to do them again. So check that out next week. I'll actually be uh, able to actually record the show next week. So we should have enough time to go through all the crazy picks and everything like that. So that's some of the stuff we like to have fun with. And that's coming next week. Yeah, definitely. Um, a, a quick rundown of uh, just the crazy things that Vikings, uh, the Steelers game, very close at the end. Uh, the Browns beating the Ravens. Shout out to the Browns in that one. The Chiefs, yeah, we talked a little bit about that. Cowboys uh, won by seven points. Again, no love for the Cowboys for me, but go ahead, Jeremy. You can shout out to them. The Seahawks had an impressive game over the Texans. Broncos beat the Lions uh, in uh, a nice fashion to get them to 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Uh, the Chargers in the, uh, the Giants, uh, even though they tried to try to make it close at the end, the Chargers were dominating. Uh, 49ers won on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals. Close game in overtime right there. Uh, the Bills and the Buccaneers, and, uh, again, another another pretty close game that could have went either way at the end. But, um, um, yeah, it, the Buccaneers got the better of the Bills at the end of that one. Uh, that, that was actually a weird game starting out where the Buccaneers just – got blown out i'm sorry the uh bills got blown out you know uh and then they came back strong in the second half so that was an interesting thing to note hackers again big uh big win from them and then the the last one the cardinals versus the the rams again another one of those games that we we kind of hinted and talked about what what happened there so yeah man uh overall i think this was a good quick show we kind of got the main thing that we wanted to get out there our picks for this upcoming week and uh yeah, man, I'm excited to see see how how they go. Um, let me know if you meet anybody else flying on the the high skies or the now highs or <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but any uh any uh any thoughts uh before we before we hit out here? Uh, no, I, like I said, um, check out our show next week and look at our bracket or our college football bowl picks and join that group on ESPN. Oh, the one thing I did think about the NFL. Arizona losing opens up the door wide open for Tampa to get that number one seed. I'm pretty angry about that, but hopefully, hopefully Green Bay can do something about it. But we'll see. Yeah, this is gonna be a gonna be an interesting end of the season. Uh, um, what was I gonna say? Was there anything else? Yo, I just read this headline. It says Star Lions tidy in Hutchinson out for the season. You should never write that line. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, Zion, that's something we should talk about pretty soon. Is he ever going to play? And if so, how good is he going to be? Oh, uh, he's... Steph. How we forget oh, about Steph? Steph. Steph, right, right. Oh, Listen Steph. Our episode about Steph. Our episode about Steph. Steph Evolution. He did it just like we thought he would. Broke the record for most three-pointers. 
in NBA history, and he's only going to keep going. I think when you look at the volume that he shoots and the efficiency, he's the best ever. There's some people who have done more, who have, have who are actually on pace to beat his record, like Donovan Mitchell, but can he shoot as efficiently and, and for as long? We don't know. But right now, you got to give props to Steph for what he's done because he's, he's, he's unmatched. Yeah, and um, one, one other thing that I'll add uh, outside of the Steph thing is shout out to Deion Sanders and Jackson State. Uh, 12 and one on the season and they got the number two recruit as they stole him from Florida State his alma mater which is really wow um, but bringing the number two recruit in the country to an HBCU we talked about this as well in another one of our episodes so go check that one out as well we're always trying to think do uh, some episodes that are gonna look forward to the future and what could happen so we had the step pollution um, we had the one about uh, Deion Sanders and Jackson State and the future of HBCU athletics. So make sure that you guys check out those. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, with that said, this is Beyond Sports with Paul and Jeremy. I am Paul. I'm Jeremy. All right. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, Have an awesome weekend and we will see you guys next week. Enjoy football. Peace. See ya.